Welcome to class. Today we will talk about maintaining proper condition for growing mushroom, growing oyster mushroom, growing enoki, and growing shimichi mushroom. So how do mushrooms seemingly spring, uh, spring up overnight? So at the appropriate time given some cue from nature, some environment conditions stimulate the fungus to form a tiny knot in the mycelia. This hyphonot is tiny and it becomes the primordium, a pin shaped head baby mushroom. The primordium includes all the cells the mushroom will ever have, and all the primordium needs is water to fill the cells. In this picture you see right here, all of this right here is hypho knots forming. This is another hypho uh, knots and you can see a lot of hypho knots forming here as well. Uh, on plates you can see these knots as dark, you know, these dark little spots. Those are hypho knots forming. So when you have a substrate, you can see hypho knots in blue, right? These little tiny uh, wispy uh, knots. Uh, throughout the mycelium, right? And primoriums is pins like, right, this pinhead thing. These are mature, pretty mature and big uh, primorium, but, you know. So, new oyster mushroom pins forming under the surface of plastic, you can see right here. So these pins on primorium right there, and they give rise to basically uh, this tiny oyster mushroom. So at this stage, they are considered a button, basically. They look like a button. So primordium and button. So the primordium enlarges into a tiny bud-like structure or a button, which will grow into a full-size mushroom. All a mushroom requires is water to fill the cells. Just remember that. So the mushroom requires a lot of water. So the mushroom can rapidly pull in water from its mycelium and expand the primordium. It can take less than 24 hours for a primordium to fill and grow. This is why a mushroom can pop overnight. Mushrooms have other membranes or veils that dehydrate rapidly, so they usually appear only when temperature and moisture condition are right. <coughs> you see uh, two spores, they knock, uh, two uh, spores, they basically inoculate, then during inoculation, they germinate, the spores grow, and the spore form a hyphonauts, the hyphonaut continue to form a primordia or primordium and that become a button and that button mature into a mushroom. So here you can see different stages. This is a uh, primordium and this is a button stage and this is usually when the button mushrooms harvest and this is a portobello. So mushrooms are about 90% water, so humidity is one of the most important factors involved in growing mushroom. For many species, high level of humidity is required to trigger the formation of primordia. Throughout development, humidity is needed to ensure that mushrooms grow to maturity. Mushrooms grown with adequate level of humidity are often larger and will have longer shelf life due to the increase in hydration. So most substrates should contain about 50 to 70 percent moisture. Uh, during fruiting, most species like 80 to 90 percent relative humidity. So that's the humidity in the air. So humidity is most critical during the first four days after initiation. During these tender days, baby mushroom pins are beginning to fruit. Humidity should be kept above 85. And as time goes on, the mushroom become more resilient and are able to withstand low humidity. After about four days uh, of pinning, it's okay for humidity level to drop to as low as 60. But ideally, conditions should be kept around 80 in the 80 range. Mushroom grown in adequate level of humidity are often larger and will have longer shelf life uh, due to hydration. So. This gives the mushroom more flavors and such. So this is uh, 
Primordia, right here, when you cut the bags, uh, if with the right humidity, 24 hours later, you see all the uh, button stage, and this button will develop within another 24 hours, you can see, and then another 24 hours. So a low humidity environment can cause mushroom to stall, form cracks, and discolor. Here's an oyster mushroom, basically. You see the caps right here are cracks. They are basically uh, this color. They are wrinkle. Uh, same thing with a shiitake mushroom, right? The caps are crack. Uh, these are, are an indication that, you know, the humidity in the environment is too low. High humidity can, can do the opposite, right? It can stimulate bacterial and mold growth causing problems so this is a bacterial disease on button mushroom and because it's too humid bacteria can spread relatively easy you have a number of other molds that colonize uh, you know if the humidity is if there's too much humidity so ideal temperature for colonization varies by species and some mushroom tolerate a border range uh, of temperature than other temperature also play a role in how quickly the mycelium colonizes the substrate. In general, cooler temperature often slow down colonization, while higher temperature may speed up the process. They can increase the chance of contamination. An ideal temperature range is in the 70s. You see different mushroom have different spawn run temperature. They have different primordia uh, uh, temperature, uh, forming formation temperature and they have different fruit development temperature, right? So doing mycelial growth uh, or spawn run, most mushrooms need relatively high temperature between 70 to 80 Celsius, rarely higher than 86. So ideally, this temperature should be around the, in a 70 range. This is because mycelium generate heat as they grow this is known as thermogenesis. So <clears throat> the internal temperature of sawdust block can be 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the outside. So if the interior temperature or 80 Fahrenheit, if the exterior temperature is, is 80 Fahrenheit, the interior core could be 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is warm enough to for the mycelium to cook itself and to introduce contamination. So exterior temperature can drop as low as 50 degree but incubation will just take longer so if the exterior temperature is 50 uh, it could be 65 to 70 in uh, in the interior interior core generally in well insulated room cooling is more important than heating as the mycelium generate heat as it grow to ensure that the bag do not overheat during incubation it is important to give them space uh, on the shelving. A good rule of thumb is to have a hand width of spacing between each bags. This allow adequate airflow to pass between the bags. If the bags are touching, uh, uh, touching each other, they can overheat where they touch, uh, and this can you know cause dieback in mycelium growth and also introduce uh, contamination. So as you see, this is a mushroom. Uh, mushroom farm and see each bags are basically separated uh, from the other allowing uh, airflow so when a block or organized right next to each other they produce heat uh, you know these heats inactivate uh, uh, inactivate the mycelium and and basically activate uh, spores and like this can, this can cause contamination these are bags that are contaminated for example So as soon, soon as the whole substrate is grown through with the mycelium, the environmental conditions have to be changed to initiate the fruiting phase. To in initiate fruiting, lower temperature and increased oxygen level generally encourage mushroom formation. Initiation can be in the form of lowering temperature or introducing more oxygen by cutting a hole in the bag. In many mushrooms, reducing the temperature by 5 degrees Celsius stimulate fruiting. So you can see these are, are primordia uh, forming in the bags. The whole bag is fully colonized. You see the bag is poofed up right, with, with air, uh, with uh, CO2. So you want to basically cut a hole to introduce oxygen. 
So mushroom fruit between 55 to 75 Fahrenheit. As temperature decrease, mushroom tend to fruit slower but have a meatier texture. Once temperature drop below 50 to 55 Fahrenheit, many species greatly decrease their productivity. As temperature increase, mushroom become thinner and go past maturity quickly. As temperature rise above 75 Fahrenheit, many species reduce their productivity and become a low quality mushroom. Temperature around 62 to 65 is perfect. This is where you get the highest quality mushroom, the meatier texture, and the fastest growth. So some growers shift the species being grown based on seasonal temperature. For example, if growing oyster, shifting from Polaris uh, oysters, which is the blue, the pearl oyster in the fall, winter, and spring, to Polaris pulmonarius, which is the phoenix oyster used in the summer, this can help the business adapt to increasing temperature in the grow room. As light is not essential during spawn run, substrate colonization, uh, during fruiting mushroom need light for proper development. The old adage of keep mushroom in the dark and feed them shit doesn't apply with specialty mushroom. Specialty mushroom, unlike psilocybe and agaricus, needs light to proper develop to properly develop. In some mushroom, light is an essential source in, in Reducing the development of fruiting bodies. These are button mushrooms grown in the dark. So how much light and how long does mushroom need to develop? So if you can comfortably read a book in the fruiting room, you your lighting should be sufficient. There isn't a particular light spectrum that is needed as the mushroom are not converting lights into energy. Regular shop light in the room will work just fine. An LED strips lighting can be used for its energy efficiency. Mushroom generally need some dim light for as low as 3 hours daily up to 16 hours. See how dim this mushroom uh, producing rooms are? Uh, you know, you don't need super bright light, right? Interestingly enough, uh, blue light can increase the yield of your mushroom. Blue light can increase the formation of pins. In addition, light intensity affect mushroom vitamins, mineral, polyphenols. Uh, for example, oyster mushroom grown in lights of 200 lux had higher uh, riboflavin and diamond content compared to mushroom exposed to light of lower intensity. Uh, again, another example is button mushroom exposed to UV light produced vitamin D2. Uh, in addition to vitamin D2, mushroom grown with high light intens intensity develop deeper color and larger caps. So two oyster right here, right? If you want Oyster grown in low light, uh, very light in pink, and you know, high intensity light, you can get brighter, nicer color. Aside from light, mushroom like human breathe in oxygen and exhale CO2. During spawn run, mushroom mycelium tolerates high level of CO2. Your substrate should get enough air exchange uh, through, breed through the breathable filter patch or micro. Uh, micro holes in the growing bag. High level of carbon dioxide are expected and desirable during spawn run but must be reduced during mushroom fruiting. And this is basically a carbon dioxide monitor. You can get it relatively cheap. Yeah. So the CO2 level in an oyster bag during colonization even with a filter patch may be 20,000 part per million or more. This level suppress fruiting. Once hold on made, the air exchange and level drop toward ambient, which is around 415 parts per million today. High carbon dioxide level then during colonization are good for mycelial growth of your fungus, but low level are good for mushroom uh, producing production. To initiate fruiting, lower temperature and increased oxygen level generally encourage the formation of mushroom. 
this is again a oyster bag and you see it's poof up with CO2 in here uh, you see uh, primordia forming so a fuel fooding container or a room will run out of oxygen so fresh air needs to be brought in to keep CO2 level below a thousand part per million for most species so oysters are a little more picky and should be kept below 800 part per million during fruiting uh, for example, if a grow room is 5 by 10 by 7, that is 350 cubic uh, feet, a fan that's rated for 400 cubic uh, feet per minute uh, will bring in new air into the room in one minute. This fan could be hooked to a timer and run for 60 seconds every 7 minutes or so for sufficient air exchange. As you bring in fresh air, take into consideration for its effect on humidity and temperature as well. Uh, basically, this is a fresh air intake fan, and you can build ducts to this to replace it there. So when CO2 is high, oyster and other mushrooms will form uh, this very long stem and little caps. You see, a very, very long stem. This is an oyster mushroom. Uh, more example of it, this looks kind of like coral. Uh, this is de uh, desirable in some case. People sell them at this stage, like ex exotic, you know, uh, coral mushroom. <clears throat> so, how can I achieve uh, all of this environmental, right? How can I achieve the right humidity, the right temperature, the right air, right? Um, so, how can I uh, accomplish this? So, one thing you can do is getting a fruiting chamber. Uh, you can do a lazy way. A lazy way is basically you have a totes around you put wet newspaper or paper towel in it and you put a block inside it this is a high humidity environment every so now and then you open the box for air exchange and basically miss the mushroom so you miss the the mushroom and do allow air to exchange maybe once a day uh, you can also cut an opening and put cotton ball to allow for proper air exchange I didn't do that I just basically open it once a day check on it spray some mist it with water and it was fine. Uh, this costs about five to seven dollar, uh, mostly associated with the totes. If you have paper, newspaper, cloth, anything, uh, you can put down to absorb water. What if you are lazier? So this costs about a dollar. Uh, you know, you could put basically a whole block into a can lining or a trash bag that you have lying around. Mix it with some water. You could put some wet paper towel or newspaper uh, or something that hold water in there to increase the humidity uh, and you can see this grower chef sherry she did this process right she cut the hole she put it into a trash bag right and watch this beautiful mushroom growth by 31 day a little slow because of the low in oxygen uh, and the low in, 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 in uh, fresh air uh, so that cause the growth to be slow but beautiful yield regardless so for small scale grower one of the most common type of mushroom fruiting chamber is called monotub so this is where a large plastic container is partially filled with substrate and then has hole drill on the side for ventilation it's fairly simple it's basically set it and forget it chamber for beginner so basically you want to start with a totes, uh, clear tote, you drill two holes on each side and you plug this hole with cotton plugs. You can put a plastic uh, trash bag down here uh, to hold the substrate but it's not necessary basically. Then you put the substrate directly into it and then you, you put, uh, you colonize, you inoculate the substrate. So you know this is set it, basically the humidity is there, forget it, the air exchange is done through here. So a shotgun fruiting chamber is very similar to a monotub in that it's also a large plastic container. However, a shotgun uh, fruiting chamber is uh, the preferable choice if you grow mushrooms that grow out of the bag, like oyster mushroom or shiitake mushroom. Uh, it costs anywhere between ten to fourteen dollar. Basically, you start with a, a totes again. You drill a lot of hole onto this tote. You can cover the hole if you want with cotton ball but you know that's not necessary uh, you get some perlite you soak it in water uh, perlites are usable all of this is reusable once it's saturated with water you put your block in there and watch it fruits basically uh, yeah
you don't have a drill gun, you can just poke a hole with a knife. It doesn't have to be this uniform, you know, it can be like basically less than that or a bigger hole. Uh, you know, it's very forgiving. Next, you have what we call the Marta tent. Uh, this was born out of the underground mushroom community and is used to define a mid uh, mid-size growth chamber that allow you to contain an effective control environment for fruiting mushroom in trays, block, and jars. So Marta tent can fit inside most closet, uh, kitchen, and basement. Uh, Marta tent control two of these conditions, right? The humidity and the fresh air exchange for exhausting carbon dioxide. While the environment outside of the tent determines the temperature and the light condition. So a Marta grow tent is a natural next step for someone transitioning from beginning to intermediate mushroom uh, grow, uh, mushroom production. It gives you control over the thing that I just mentioned. It's very adapt adaptable to a variety of growing methods. So the setup will allow you to produce up to several pound mushroom per week and it's relatively inexpensive and easy to set up. So this is you know one of the way to go. Cost anywhere between 115 to 155. So basically you want to start with a plastic greenhouse that's roughly 23 uh, inches by 17 by 57. You could buy this relatively cheap on Amazon, so I would not so buy it on a mushroom site, mushroom company site because they, they, they do a markup. You want to get an ultra uh, sonic humidifier. Uh, you can find this on Amazon, basically 2.5 liter for $25, $35. You want a digital humidity controller with sensor. That's roughly around $35 to $40. And then fresh air exchange fan, about $25 to $40. So basically, first thing you un uh, you set up the tent, you set up the um, uh, humidity control with sensor, and you set up the humidifier. And then finally, you set up an intake uh, air exchange fan. And that allow you to basically fruit your mushroom. So biological efficiency uh, is a way to calculate the effectiveness of a mushroom strain and substrate uh, combination when growing mushroom. It's a measurement that was originally developed uh, by the button mushroom industry in order to grade certain strain of mushroom. So. Um, So to figure out what the biological efficiency of mushroom is, uh, you you do this by dividing the fresh weight of the total mushroom yield by the dry weight of the substrate. Time this by 100%. So for example, a bag of straw may weight six pounds. Uh, drained straw contain about 66% uh, moisture, so the dry weight of the substrate is roughly two pounds. Let's say you you uh, harvest. Uh, three pounds of uh, oyster mushroom from this block. The biological efficiency is three divided by two times 100, which is 150%. With oyster, biological efficiency on straw can be as high as 200% or sometimes even more. So a biological efficiency over 100% with oyster should be a minimum, hopefully. So in mushroom production, you can get several crops in uh, succession. So each flush or each crop is called a break. A flush in mushroom world refer to air exchange, which we will we'll cover more in depth when we discuss button mushroom production. Generally, for mushroom production, you want to target three break. The weight of the successive break will be smaller than the preceding one. Sawdust may yield more than three breaks but eventually contaminant may be evidence. In mushroom production, you know, uh, it's common to, you know, to use different substrate to increase your biological efficiency. You see sawdust, palm fruit, almond leaves, a bunch of different substrate. You see that sawdust, the biological efficiency, uh, you know, that and, and palm fruit husk is really high so it's really good um, again different mushroom have different substrate that they require uh, you know you can get different biological efficiency uh, from from the substrate so for growing oyster mushroom just want to refer you to the week two for detail for oyster production uh, and also your class handout today uh, discuss a lot about oyster production more in detail 
Uh, just keep in mind that many oysters grow best at cooler temperatures, around 60 Fahrenheit, but some will do well at 65, 70, uh, again, you know, depending on what species of oyster you're looking at. The Phoenix oyster go up to 90, 95. So just remember, don't get hung up on temperature, right? I mean, if you grow a mushroom, you, you know, just vibe with your environment, basically. Uh, by law, sure, efficiency on straw can be as high as 200, or sometimes even more. So keep that in mind, oyster, the you know it's very efficient at colonizing substrate and producing producing uh, fruiting body so our initial attempt will be to coat oyster mushroom in like uh, in week two remember there's number of species you know you yellow oyster abalone uh, so there's so many to choose from so you can always uh, select the right one for your environment this is king oyster they are generally grown on sawdust in a bottle with a neck that allow them to develop this long stalk. Uh, when it's grown on straw, uh, notice that the 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 stalk uh, the stalk's not as thick and uh, you know not as good looking as when it's in a jar. I mentioned before, like you know, oyster strain have a lot. Of, there's a lot of different strain of oyster strain. They have different fruiting temperature. You see a wide range of fruiting temperature. You can see you can grow them the end of spring to summer fall and then some of them you can grow a little past fall right like like the blue dolphin has pretty heat tolerant the polar white and also the cure enoki so Conversely, enoki is grown in autoclavable plastic jar on sawdust or ground corn cob, supplemented with rice or wheat bran. So first, the filler machine fill the bottle and punch a hole through the center of the substrate. The bottle then or steam autoclave to sterilize, and the machine remove the lid, fill the hole with spawn. So this is either sawdust or grain spawn. So here you have a mixing machine, mix all the ingredient. Fills up the bottle and then the bottle is getting autoclave. Uh, so once the bottle is autoclave, right, uh, the spawn get put in and spawn run. See the spawns colonizing this, and once the spawn colonize through the bottle, uh, this equipment basically drill out the old spawn on top and this allow uh, the growth of mushroom to to, to format the, the cap. And here is baby Noki. So after full colonization, the bottle are brought to another machine that removed the lid and mechanically scraped the peripheral of the top layer of the mycelium uh, from the substrate. This process is known as kinkaki in Japanese, which means to scrape gem. So once scraped, the bottle are flipped upside down and left for a few days before being uh, put into fruiting. Uh, this is done so to get the substrate correctly hydrated. Uh, allowing the water, uh, the, allowing the substrate to stay humid uh, without forming a pool of water. So this is a drilling machine. Get handle 12 bottle at once. So after that, the jars are moved to a room maintained at 31 to 41 Fahrenheit and high humidity for a few days. Uh, then they are fruit at 46 Fahrenheit with low lights for eight days. So with careful regulation of carbon dioxide. So the crops are allowed to mature in the dark and is harvest 25 days later. So total time to harvest is five to six weeks. It's not like oyster. Uh, plastic or paper collar around the top of the jar support the stems and elevate carbon dioxide, resulting in long stem, almost capless, blanched, crisp mushroom. Uh, Biological efficiency of enoki is roughly about 70%, so uh, 75 to 80%. So here's the color or the, the, the enoki, and they going up there, the, the climbing basically. So if you grow enoki in lights on sawdust block, the mushroom will develop their normal orange brown color. Uh, this stem or dark brown and velvety and a texture that doesn't develop in the industrial method. You see this is industrial uh, enoki that you buy and eat. It's you know nice, crisp, small. If you go on, on sawdust block and you give it 
the proper light it developed this coloration and what happens if you grow this thing in the wild so in the wild you see developing deeper color you know the thicker stock uh, comparing to to growing it in the lab or in so shimichi uh, the crime of shimichi are similar to that to oyster so commercially they're grown in jar and sawdust and ground corn hop corp, corn cob supplement with seed holes and grain uh, just like you, like how they just like how they produce uh, enoki the mushroom form in clumps and each mushroom has a small cap the first pick is ready in about 24 days there are pure white strain as well as brown strain this is a pure white and this is a brown strain with that, thank you so much and I see you guys in the next lecture.